This video is going to take a look at scatter diagrams and linear correlation as we attempt to calculate and interpret the linear correlation coefficients. First, a scatter diagram. Scatter diagrams are graphs in which our pairs are plotted as individual points on a grid with a horizontal x and vertical y axis. We have names for each of these variables. The explanatory variable x is often called the independent variable, and it attempts to explain changes in the other variable. While the response variable, y, often called the dependent variable, is the one that responds to changes in the explanatory variable. So for example, if data is collected to compare phosphorus reduction in drainage water, where x represents the concentration at the inlet of the facility, and y represents the concentration at the outlet of the facility, we're attempting to see if there's a relationship between the inlet and the outlet. Does the in control the out? Well, if we make a scatter diagram, and let's go ahead and start this scatter diagram at 5. We're going to go up as high as 8, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And on the y-axis, we'll go ahead and start it at 3. And it has to go up to 7, 4, 5, 6, 7. We'll go one more, 8. We can put a dot to represent each point. So when x is 5.2, y is 3.3. So we'll go right 5.2 and up 3.3 to make our first dot. Then we'll go right 7.3 and up to 5.9 and make another dot. We'll right 6.7 and up to 4.8, and there's our ne next dot. 5.9, 4.5 is the next dot. 6.1, 4.0 is the next dot. 8.3, 7.1 is the next dot. 5.5, 3.6 is the next dot. And 7.0, 6.1 is the last dot. And so we end up with this trend of dots that shows the relationship between how the concentration at outlet depends on the concentration at inlet. And what you might start to notice is they do tend to trend in the same direction. We can almost draw a straight line through this data. That attempt to draw a straight line through the data is what we call linear correlation. Linear correlation measures how close the data follows a straight line. If we have a positive correlation, what we're saying there is as the explanatory variable increases, the response variable will decrease. Basically, as one goes up, the other goes up. And if you draw a straight line, you'll see it's got a positive slope. Contrast that with a negative correlation, where as the explanatory variable increases, the response variable is going to decrease. There we'll see a downhill trend. That's a negative correlation. Not just direction, though. Correlation also measures strength. So we'll say we have a high correlation whenever the dots follow basically a straight line. If the dots look like a really good straight line, that's going to be a high correlation. Whether positive or negative, straight line means high correlation. A low correlation means the dots are tending to go in the same direction, but they deviate a little bit more from the line of best fit. So here's an example of negative correlation. But notice those dots are a little more spread out. That's got a much lower correlation than the previous example because the dots are away from the line. We can even get as extreme as, say, we have no correlation. And that's where we see no apparent pattern in the, in the graph, where the dots are just all over the place with no up or down tendency. The best fit line we could draw would be almost a horizontal line, which is really useless to us in predicting data values. So that would be no correlation. So if that's the idea behind correlation, how do we measure it? Measuring correlation is done with a statistic we call r, or the sample correlation coefficient. Whenever r is close to positive 1, we say it has a very strong positive correlation. The closer to 1, the stronger it is. 
If it's close to negative 1, that negative just means we have a negative correlation, but still very, very strong. And then the closer to the center, or 0, means we have less and less correlation. In fact, when r is 0, we say there's absolutely no correlation. So the formula we use for r is a bit complicated looking, but we're going to break this formula down as we work out an example. So if I want to calculate the r value for these three data points, I copied the equation on here to make it easy for us, we see we need several sums in order to put them into the formula. We're going to make a column for sums underneath this table here. You see, to get the sum of the x's, we just add the x's together. 7 plus 3 plus 1 is 11. I'll label that as the sum of the x's. The sum of the y's, we add the y's together. 10 plus 9 plus 3 is 22. That's the sum of the y's. That's not the only sums we see in here. We have a sum of our x squareds. We have a sum of y squareds. And we have the sum of the xy's in this formula. So let's go through and square all the x's. We end up with 1, 9, and 49. Squaring the y's, we get 9, 81, and 100. And multiplying x times y, we get 3, 27, and 70. We need these three sums as well in order to use our formula to find r. Adding up the x squareds, we end up with 59 is the sum of the x squareds. Adding up the y squareds, 190 is the sum of the y squareds. And adding up the xy's, we end up with 100 is the sum of the xy's. Now that we have each of those pieces, we're ready to plug them into our formula. First, the formula asks for n. That's our sample size. We had three points times the sum of the xy's, which we found out was 100, minus the sum of the x's, which was 11, times the sum of the y's, which is 22, all over the square root of the sample size 3 times the sum of the x squareds. Don't confuse that with the sum of the x's squared. The sum of the x squareds was 59 minus the sum of the x's, that was 11, and we want to square that value, times the square root of the sample size 3, times the sum of the y squareds, 190, minus the sum of the y's, which was 22, squared. And that gives us a big equation we can type into our calculator. Be very careful with parentheses. You probably need an extra parentheses around the numerator and around the denominator. And if you type it all in your calculator correctly, you should end up with 0.8358 when we round. Now, because that's positive, I know that these must be connected in an uphill positive correlation. It's also pretty close to a 1.0. Could be closer, so it's not a very strong correlation, but I might call that a strong correlation because it's closer to 1 than 0, definitely. Now, going through these steps, especially the calculator bit, typing it all in correctly can be a bit tedious. So I'm going to show you a little shortcut in Excel to help you calculate this value. Excel has a nice uh, command called coral. Then you select your x's, comma, and select your y's. Let's take a look at how we can do this. First thing I'm going to do is actually go through the calculations we just did, making our columns so we can verify all of our values were correct. So first, to get x squared, if I hit equals and click the x cell, the first x cell, shift 6 gives me a caret or an exponent key, and then I can say squared. When I hit enter, it has now squared that x value. Same thing for y squared. I can say equals. Click the y, shift 6, and then a 2 to square it, and I get the 9. We can do the same thing for the xy's. We'll say equals. This time we'll click the x times, which is shift 8, and then click the y, and you'll see it's going to multiply x times y together. 
nice about Excel, especially when you have a much larger data set, is I can select those three cells and grab that dot in the bottom corner and drag it down, and it's going to automatically calculate all those values for all the other points. Now all I need to do is calculate my sums. I can say equals sum, open a parentheses, and select my x values, and that's going to give me the sum of all the x's. Again, I can click that dot in the bottom right corner, and as I stretch it across, it's going to find the sum of all of those pieces. Now we just have to type in our formula for r, which is equals, open a parentheses for the numerator, the sample size was 3, times the sum of the xy's, and I'm just going to click the cell, minus the sum of the x's, I'll click that cell, times the sum of the y's, click that cell, and close the parentheses. Divided by, open a parentheses for the denominator, and then we're going to do sqrt for the square root, and open a parentheses. Sample size was 3 times the sum of the x squared, so I'll click that cell, minus the sum of the x's squared, which is shift 6. Close the parentheses on the square root, and then we are going to multiply by another square root. Open a parentheses, sample size is 3. The sum of the y squareds, click that cell, minus the sum of the y's and then squared, shift 6. I'll close the parentheses on the square root, close the parentheses on the denominator, and it gives me that exact same value we calculated by hand of 0.8358 after we round. But as I said, Excel actually makes this easier. I don't have to go through all these steps. I could have just typed equals oral, open a parentheses, Select the x's, comma, select the y's, and when I hit enter, Excel will do all of those calculations for me in one quick step, giving me the exact same value. Hopefully this video was helpful for you as you calculate and interpret linear correlation coefficients, especially using Excel to save you some blood, sweat, and tears as you calculate through that ugly R formula. Good luck to you as you work on the assignment.